really also more than anything excited to be amongst so many amazing change agents and innovators uh, and real movement builders. And so, I, I mean, Tamika Mallory and Phaedra and Michael like are people who in my life and work as an activist, I've had the pleasure of working with them and their organization. So I'm just incredibly happy and proud to be with all of these amazing folks and particularly Phaedra and Tamika. We have been we have been on conference calls at like 10 30 and 11 o'clock at night. I mean this is like five, six, seven, eight, eight years ago trying to plan marches and rallies and, and movement and fighting uh, and then turn around the next morning in meetings at 8 a.m. Um, so it's just really awesome to be here. So my name is Joe Taka Edie and I have the pleasure every single day of waking up as the head of government affairs for Linda, which is a fintech company based here in Silicon Valley. I want to just, I have to say, shout out to uh, a lot of my colleagues that are here, Black Ladders, I know you guys are here. Um, but my story and my breakthrough into tech is, is one that even when I think about it myself, I don't really believe that I would find myself here. If someone would have told me at any point in my past that in 2017 that I would be an executive at a tech company in Silicon Valley, first of all, I would have said, what is Silicon Valley? <laughs> Second, I would have laughed and I would have remarked that I'm a strategist and an organizer. That's not my world. That is a place where it is not a place for me. Well, here I am today and I prove even my former self wrong. Because I firmly believe that there is a place for so many talents and experiences in this industry. You know, as an activist, I've always listened to activist music and Gil Scott Heron. How many of you are familiar with Gil Scott Heron? Yes. So Gil Scott Heron is famous for these words that the revolution will not be what? Televised. Televised. So about five or six years ago, I was like, I don't know what he was talking about. The revolution will not be televised. But you know what? Gil Scott Heron, I believe, was thinking far greater than we were. Because he was right. The revolution will not be televised. It will be live streamed. It will be tweeted. It will be Instagram. It will be Snapchat chat and it will be other things that we are probably building right now and others that we have not even thought about. And I say that to say that the intersection of technology and movement building and activism is real. It is so real. Sometimes we look and we turn on the television and we are in trying times right now. We are at such a pivotal moment in our country where the work that we do every single day cannot be any more important. Because if you are the coder at Instagram that is creating the code to create the platform for the activists in Ferguson to take a photo and to show the body of a young black man gunned down in the streets, left like an animal for four hours for the world to see and be motivated? Yeah. Or whether or not you are building platforms at Twitter that enables activists to continue to tell that story. Or building platforms where organizers will come together in meetups and show up and rally. Or whether or not you're building are working on the platform that will enable every single person in our country to lift their voices up to their elected leaders, you matter. And it's pivotal. Now, I'll be honest and real, and we all know that not all technology that is being built necessarily is focused on movement building, but a lot of what we are building is actually fueling the activism that we're seeing. And sometimes we can be in our silos, and we can think, how is it that I am contributing to the movement, but when you're building, 
the very platform that amplifies the voices of activists and those that are often and so often and sadly pushed to the margins, but create spaces for them to kick back the center where they belong, you too are at the center of this movement. And it is important that we ask ourselves, what kind of technology are we building? Who are we building for? I'm so proud every single day to walk into Linda where we're building technology to take people out of the debt traps and poverty and in a pathway to financial health. I say this to say that we must constantly ask ourselves, how can we be a part of the solution? What can we do? And not all of us will run for office. Not all of us will organize a rally or a march. Not all of us will write a policy paper with all the policy solutions. But we all can do something. And that something is pivotal and important. And that something absolutely matters. I never thought that I could be in this industry. I didn't think it was a place for me. When I was approached by Ben Jealous, and I'm so grateful for him, and mentioned Frida K. Four, I said to them, that's not a place for me. I don't really belong. I can't be successful. I doubted my own self. Here I was, someone who had traveled the world, lobbied in the United Nations, 40 countries, had helped win a landmark Supreme Court decision in our nation, but yet I didn't think I was good enough for an industry that in many ways, like so many of us, we're overqualified. Wow. Talk about it. Talk about it. So the reality is that there is a place in this ecosystem for all of us and the work that we do every day fuels movement. And I implore for each and every one of us to think, how might what I'm doing fuel the critical work that needs to take place in this country? And also, it's not just what you do at work, but what do you do in your everyday life? How do you challenge systems in your companies and in this ecosystem. Because a silent voice mm. is a voice that's never heard. Thank you very much.